The people, the headlines, the issues impacting you and your family. This week in Cincinnati on 9 on Your Side. Good morning and welcome to This Week in Cincinnati. I'm Julie O'Neill. First today, the two new co-chairs of the Democratic Party in Hamilton County, Connie Pillich and Gwen McFarland. Connie Pillich, a familiar name to many in this area. She served as state representative from 2009 to 2014, and she ran for the Democratic nomination for governor this year. We'll get more into that. Gwen McFarland is a Springfield Township trustee. She also chairs the Hamilton County Tax Levy Review Committee, which recommends tax rates to the county commissioners. They are succeeding Tim Burke, who ran the party in Hamilton County for nearly 25 years. He has appeared several times on This Week in Cincinnati, and that very interview was one that uh, I did with him. I've been here as long as he's been party chairman, so oh this, my is, goodness. this is very mm -hmm. new. Welcome mm -hmm. and congratulations. Thank okay. you. So the two of you are kind of splitting up duties mm -hmm. um, of what you will do. Can you tell me a little bit about who's doing what and why? Well, I'll, I'll start. start. Uh, mm -hmm. First first of all, Gwen and I both bring a really kind of interesting uh, background that's a little bit similar and a little bit different. We both have really robust campaign skills. We've won in very, very difficult districts. We know how to run campaigns. We know how to be very, very tough candidates. But in my 12 years as uh, a political candidate, I have raised over $6 million. And uh, it took me a long time to build those fundraising skills, so I'm going to be using those skills to make sure our party has the resources we need to support our candidates and to grow. You focus on that, and Gwen? And, and my focus is as a grassroots organizer. Uh, I've had experience in leading and ca uh, campaign manager for, for leading candidates in the Democratic Party. Many, if not all, have won. Many won on their first uh, opportunity when they first went out to uh, run for a political office and I ran campaigns that were countywide as well. And uh, my background it was one in which I started off in Claremont County, that's where I was born and raised, and my parents were union folks, and mm -hmm. uh, then I went to Miami University, and it was at Ma Miami University that I really got connected with uh, becoming more of a grassroots organizer for social justice, for civil rights, and all you know the rights of individuals as a whole. Well, both of you clearly have a passion for what you're doing. A lot of mm -hmm. people don't realize, but uh, your counterpart, Alex Triantafilo with the Republican Party, he, that's a paid position. You two do not uh, take money for this, yeah. uh, for it's, this honor. It's slightly less. Why yeah. on earth <laughs> do you want to create extra work for yourselves? Why is this so important in teaming up to do it? Well, one of the things that I, as I hear individuals say, well, how come you're not getting paid? It's not about the money, it's about the cause. And the money, yes, certainly could be an issue, but not for, for me and not for Connie, or else we wouldn't be doing this. And the other thing is, when I hear individuals say, why are you doing this? Because it's a, quote, thankless job. And mm. I say it's a thankful job, because we're going to continue to move the Democratic Party forward, uh, moving us into the future. And maybe one day uh, there'll be maybe a stipend, but that's not the initial intent of why I stepped forward. And, and I, like yeah. Gwen, have always been drawn to service. That's why I served in the military. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I took a lot of pro bono and public defender cases uh, as, a, as, a, as an attorney, and that's why I ran for office in the first place. Right. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the party for a little bit because mm -hmm. you have the Bernie Sanders side of things, more toward the socialist end. You have the establishment side of the more traditional Democratic Party. What, what are the numbers, do you think, here in, in Hamilton County in terms of the trending of those two sides? And then how do you bring the two together? Well, I think what we are seeing that is that regardless of who, uh, which candidate these people supported in 2016. Mm -hmm. They are very, very excited about taking back our state, uh, being a part of the campaign for Ohio, and seeking to restore uh, some of the rights and, and uh, benefits of being an Ohio citizen used to have for us. So they're coming to the table. Is there something specific the two of you, you know, when you're having lunch, by the way, do you get along well? Is there? Yes, yes, yeah. yes we yeah. do. I, that, that's a good thing. That's, <laughs> that's an excellent thing. And we've worked together over the years, mm -hmm. never dreaming that we would be working in this capacity. Right. So we, we pretty much uh, have been very comfortable with some of the other areas that we've worked together as a team on. 
And mm -hmm. when you ask about the blending of a Bernie Sanders and et cetera, I feel and believe that in Hamilton County, we have this great blending of all the constituents, which I think is healthy. Mm -hmm. And, and the common cause is the same. We want to see that qualified, competent individuals are elected to public office. It's not something that you'll see where people are, have this infighting like that, but I think we've been able to work and bridge the gap so that you can be a, a, a good Democrat, you can be a progressive Democrat, or you could be wherever you are, but you're still fighting for the same cause and being a public servant for the individuals that you're here to serve with. So I think I'm yeah. a blending of both. I'm a blending of Bernie because my background uh, has been one where I'm just kind of right marginally between mm -hmm. progressive Democrat as well as maybe a little bit of traditional, but not much. We, we were talking a little bit before about the election in New York, Alexandria mm -hmm. Ocasio-Cortez. Ocasio yeah. yes. um, and uh, that was wild. She was not expected to win. In fact, her reaction was one of shock yes, she when was. they told her that she beat this longtime establishment Democrat. Do you, you know, in your lunches together, do you talk about how there seems to be some momentum in the party toward that end? And is that the younger people or what do you think is happening there? I think it's it's not just the young people, but they are an incredibly important part of it. But I think you're seeing that people all across America, and especially here in Hamilton County, are in many cases tired of the same old faces and the same old rhetoric. They mm -hmm. want someone new. They want someone exciting. They want someone who's going to stand up for working families. They don't want someone who's just going to Congress so they can say, hey, I'm in Congress and uh, this, is what I, this is what I am. They want someone who's actually gonna work for them. And I think what, what the young woman in New York showed is that if you work your tail off like she did mm -hmm. and you embrace newer technologies, you can reach a lot more people than the regular folks who, you, who are usually count on, counted on to vote in each election. And that's what she did. Yeah. So, and she also went where the people were. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and she heard what the people said she listened and then she responded because that was her nature. Uh, she's a very progressive Democrat. And you know I think that's one of the attributes that the Democratic Party has. We embrace everyone, even though we have different views at times. I was amazed and impressed with her, her run and her victory yeah. because she demonstrated that you go and meet the people where they are. And I think that's the fundamental difference you may see between the old establishment who continues to want you to come to them versus you going to them, or them coming to you, I'm sorry. We have one minute. Have you spent time with Tim Burke and gotten his insights on, okay, I took us through the last quarter century, it's a different Hamilton County now, the electorate has changed, and do you focus more on technology? We got about 30 seconds left since I talk too much. We <laughs> absolutely do focus more on technology. Absolutely, you have to, to, to communicate in the modern world and to, in, to try to attract young voters. One of our goals is to bring more young people into, into the Democratic Party, and we have to do that with technology. And we've already initiated that process throughout many parts of Hamilton County, and we're not afraid of new technology. We're comfortable with Facebook, Twitter, uh, and all the other uh, technological things, Instagrams and we'll, all of we'll that. We'll have our kids teach us. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> all right, thank you both yeah. for coming in. Good luck to you. Congratulations again. Thank on you. Great to be here. Getting the confidence of your colleagues. Thank you. And as Julie. many of you know, Alex Triantafila, who I mentioned a moment ago, leads the Republican Party in Hamilton County. He has also been a past guest on This Week in Cincinnati. Triantafila was reelected for another four-year term as party chairman last month. He has led the GOP in Hamilton Hamilton County now for 10 years. So we will be seeing him <laughs> up against these two women and debates to come.